Hello everyone, welcome to this live. Really excited to come here live and in the 1111 movement, channeling galactic energies and of the sort. And I'm gonna bring on Kristen Davies. She is my friend and she is also a psychic medium or whatever you wanna call it. And she channels the angels, you know, the ETs, things like that. So it's pretty cool. Let's see if I can see if she will. There we go. So Kristen Davies is joining now. Hello, Amanda. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Galactic. Hey. We're talking galactics. You're kind you of lagging a little bit. Oh, am I? There, there oh. you go. Okay, good, good. <laughs> um, you know, you know what I was thinking. Everybody puts so much importance on channeling the angels. I can barely hear you. Isn't uh -oh. that weird? That's so weird. Hmm. Maybe uh, we'll try once again and see how it. Or I can also check my laptop to see if this is what it's like. One second. Maybe if I go get some uh, earbuds or something. Hmm. Check my laptop to see. If oh, sounds okay for my laptop. Like. If I can hear you with these earbuds it's on. Okay. So. Okay. I can hear you good now with these earbuds. Oh, good. Oh, Actually. great. So can you hear I'm me fine? Your... Yep. Yep. Okay. And it looks good on here. All right. Oh, do awesome. It and it looks good on me. Okay, great. Okay, you know what I was thinking is um, everyone uh, puts so much importance on uh, channeling the angels, channeling your spirit guides, but there's not as much conversation about channeling the galactics, channeling ET family members, starseed family members, or the mm -hmm. energies that are around you or around the planet that aren't from here. So... Mm -hmm. I find that really interesting that, um, you know, this isn't something that was brought to the forefront for me. I was channeling the angels and spirit guys, and it was a whopper of a surprise when <laughs> these energies stepped forward and started to chat with me and through me for the people I was channeling for. And no, for sure. always helpful, always wanting to help with guidance, letting them know that they're there, that they're there to help them and support them. Um, you know, after all the readings that I've given, I've only seen one time where there was ET energies hanging out with someone that were, as Archangel Michael called it, running amok and needed mm. to be gorted out. And as soon as you say that, yeah, I don't want these energies around me, make sure that that's the case, they're gone gone like in the now gone in a heartbeat um yep and mm -hmm. that's it and we have so many et energies that are all around us that are open to communicating with us and depending on what tv show you're watching or what you're watching on a youtube video because when you're putting your attention and focus there they're actually noticing you too have you yeah. noticed that like you get yeah, a little like when you when you watch certain programs, you'll see certain energies kind of come forth, and it's kind of yeah. cool. I mean, just when you watch different um, programs, and it, it's also like what you like you say, it's different perspectives of what you see, like when you mm -hmm. like see the stuff. If you're gonna look at it from like a very fearful per mm -hmm. perspective, you're gonna probably attract that energy to to you. You know, if you have a positive outlook on ETs and things like that you're not going to experience any negative things most likely. And uh, really there's not that many negative ETs on earth in general. Like a lot of them have just kind of exited in the past. And uh, also I've noticed that sometimes people will just, short, they will feel an energy on the side, like trying to communicate with them and they will mistake that and they get all paranoid. That's early on in my awakening. That's what I would do. I would get paranoid, but it was yeah. really either just an angel or trying to communicate with me or an ET. So I thought that was pretty cool. Like watching you, of course, you know, helps me trust more. And I was like, okay, it, it isn't all, you know, evil and like good and stuff like that. It's not, it's not scary. They want you to think 
that's what I've noticed in like the mainstream. They want you to think, oh, it's scary to like communicate with these things or in the spiritual community even. Oh, don't communicate with anything. Only communicate with your higher self. Like, come on. Like, it's that, that's that's just kind of a closed-minded mindset, you know, a little bit, I feel. And uh, I feel like we're meant to be able to communicate freely. It's our divine birthright to be able to communicate with our spirit guides, our angels, things like that. And, yeah, it just it's, it's depending on what perspective you see it from as well. Like, you know, you have your spirit guides. And a lot of people just see them as spirit guides. And it, it, depending on what perspective you – if you believe in ETs, they might show up more – of it in an ET form, you know what I mean? Because cause a lot of these spirit guides, they're just kind of yeah. like ETs, similar to us, you know. Because we've, you know, incarnated on different planets as well. Yeah. So I thought we that's pretty cool. Like all the souls from your soul group have been in different bodies other than Earth. To think that we've only incarnated in this body in this form, or that we're only having the seeming experience on Earth in this energy form is just—it's just so limited. Um, and, you know, I had no preconce preconceived notion of what it was going to be like before I started channeling them. I didn't think positive. <laughs> well, I suppose I thought pretty positively about it. I, I didn't see any reason why not to. Like, I didn't hear from the archangels that I should be fearful. I didn't hear from anyone on the other side that I should be fearful of any kind. And you think about your soul. How does your soul communicate? It doesn't have a mouth moving on the other side. <laughs> telepathy. It's your. It is your birthright. Yeah. The way that you communicate. That is the main way that everyone communicates. So to think that you can't do that is yeah, just silly in this form. Yeah. So like for sure, like, I think that uh, you know being uh, you don't also you don't have to be a hundred percent like in meditation like connected all the time to be able to communicate it should be a free in my opinion it should be a more free experience just being able to tap off to the side and pick up messages here and there instead of oh i need to reach some certain level of consciousness maybe that's true you need maybe you need to meditate some quiet your mind to be able to communicate yeah. with them but you don't have to reach a hundred percent accuracy or something no one's a hundred percent accurate okay <laughs> <laughs> To ground your energy and quiet your mind. That's it. Are you 100% perfect? Well, no. No medium. <laughs> and who's a medium? Everyone on earth. Everyone yeah. <laughs> on channeling. It's just that they're maybe not consciously channeling. They're doing more, more unconscious channeling, right? So the thing that, uh, to think that we can't or we shouldn't, it's just silly to me. Um, energy is energy and energy will communicate with energy and we are energy right and is and this energy is waiting to communicate uh, through us and even now as we're talking I get this huge amount of energy uh, mm -hmm. above my head and down through my back and um, chatting with me while while we're having this conversation so it's knowing that we're having this conversation and it's ready to communicate through us to yeah. relate a message for everyone watching today. So I thought it'd be kind of cool if we were going to just um, see what message would like to come through for everyone and anyone that's watching this video, whether it's with us now or later on and see what message they would like everyone to hear. Yeah, and uh, I would like to say one last thing before we get into the channeling a little bit, but <laughs> I think that, you know, people think, you know, when I first started the spiritual awakening, it just kind of made sense that we should be able to connect with the angels, our spirit guides, things like that. It makes sense because when you think about it, all this spirituality, you know, awakening, you know, breaking free from the matrix, things like that, we kind of, you know, we realize that this is just a temporary experience and it is not our full self. And then that there's some, there's things on the other side of things. There's, this is not just the, oh, everything's so serious. You have to be here in this, you know, confined in this box type of thing. And uh, it makes sense that there's other energies out there and that we're able to communicate with them even when we're incarnated here. So that, that's And it's cool. a beautiful thing to know that we're not alone. And a lot of these energies are here to help us. And they're here to communicate and to assist us. 
This is why they're here. They're here to assist the planet. They're, and we're all interconnected. So, you know, everybody wants our well-being. Everybody wants to help and help us thrive and, and, and to move forward and to do well. Um, and this was just never on my mind in the beginning. It was always the angels for me. So when they started to step forward, it wasn't in a scary way that nobody wanted to jump out and scare me. Uh, yeah. It was always very slow, very considerate, stepping forward slowly, letting me get an idea of what they look like without, you know, you know, being abrupt. It was always respectful. It was always, um, you know, making sure that I'm comfortable. Uh, I, I remember channeling your uh, ET origins the first time, and it was quite a surprise. I had never seen a blue avian before, mm -hmm. and it was staring me right in the eye. And uh, and, and the, <laughs> it was funny. it was yeah it was it was a bit of a shocker, and then I also saw another uh, uh, bird species similar to blue avian, but in red where you had been. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you think, oh, I must be, you know, off in my own little, ooh, ooh, seeing this stuff. But then when I mentioned it to you, uh, you said, yes, this is resonating with me. And this is my experience with the blue yeah. avians, confirming that what you're seeing is ac accurate. So yeah, you just pretty cool. know. Are yeah, it's pretty cool. Everyone comes at it from a different perspective, you know, like, there's, there's usually a reason why you're in more into angels. There's usually a reason why I'm more in the ETs or something else, you know, it's, it, it, it depends. Yeah. Everyone's different. And that's why this, all, this whole, like, spirituality thing is pretty cool, because everyone's so different. And everyone has so many different origins, different reasons why this and that. And sometimes there isn't a reason why maybe you just like a certain energy, you know, yeah. something like that. And uh, this person the other day was like, oh, you should talk more about the red avians. You know, I saw them in my dream. I was like, the reason I, I talk about the blue avians a lot more because they're more well known. People know more about blue avians. And yeah. also, they're very similar, <laughs> blue avians and red avians. So it's like anything that I say about blue avians is going to be probably almost yeah. the same thing, you know. More, so I more that noted. You know, if yeah. we look how many different different galactic origins there are? Well, I mean, it's unlimited. Just mm -hmm. the amount that I've seen that I haven't seen before in this past year is a lot. <laughs> and I don't even have, like, I'm like, huh, huh. I, like, you just don't think you're going to see that or experience that. Um, and they describe themselves down to a T and why they're here and what they're all about and what they're helping the person with. And I love how people have starseed family members that are here helping them, their friends and family members that they've had other incarnations with on other locations, other planets, and here helping us. So I just think it's just, I just think it's brilliant. And it's something that I didn't tap into right away. For me, I guess I always resonated with the angels. Um, I always jokingly say, I work for them. <laughs> but it's really, I work with them. Uh, yeah. They teach you a lot. I'm on their payroll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do help you like run all your courses and things like that. And speaking of courses, oh, guys, we're, we're, we're yep. coming up with the Starseed, your Starseed Origins course. It's coming up in about five days, September yep. 5th, six days, September, September 15th. 15th. So we're going to leave all the description of where to find that course, how to sign up, things like that. It's going to be on Kristen's website and yep. we're both running it. So it's going to be pretty cool. We have a lot of pre-recorded content. So if you want to know your Starseed Origins, if you, if you want to know more about Starseed Origins or in being in like a community with other people that are learning about this stuff too, uh, we strongly recommend you to come join us. But yeah. It'll be so much fun. And, you know, uh, learning what your top three uh, Starseed Origins are um, is going to be uh, sensing and feeling your Starseed family members that are with you and so much more. Learning about the different Starseeds. And, you know, all those questions that you have that you're trying to get answered in different spiritual groups or otherwise, or you just have on your mind, this is where you're going to get them all answered. Every single yeah. one of them all week long. Uh, we're going to have a live broadcast with practice every single day, uh, mm -hmm. right to the end. I'm pushing yeah. right to the end on this one. <laughs> Even okay. We're going to yeah. like do remote viewing and sensing where you've been. How cool yeah. is that going to be to learn yeah. this thing? 
some people are like, oh, well, it's not important to know about our star seeds origins and know, know where we came from. And yeah, well, okay, if you've if you've incarnated elsewhere, you are probably curious about these things, and I was too. And I actually like learning, but I like talking about these things. I like learning about these things. I like having fun. I mean, who doesn't like to have fun? That's what Earth is about, you know, to have, exactly. you know, just to have fun. So, I mean, maybe <laughs> it's a little bit bad, I, I would say, to go too far down certain rabbit holes, you know, so with it can be like a topic this, but... we talk about during yeah, this course, sure. rabbit yeah. holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How far are you going to go? Are you going to bounce around for the rest of your life or you want to narrow it down? Let's narrow it down, I say make life smoother and easier. Mm -hmm. And that's what Simple. this course is about. It's about helping make your life easier by having a broader perspective as to why you are the way you are and why you feel the way you do on earth and how to make it easier mm -hmm. and get answers sure. to your questions. Yeah. Shall we so, get into the channeling now? <laughs> let's do it. This energy okay. is really strong right now. So I, I think um, if it's okay with you, I'm going to take the lead because it's, okay. it's some it's like knocking on my door really loudly. And, um, mm -hmm. and so I'm, <laughs> I say that, but he's not really knocking. <laughs> he's just like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Energetically <laughs> is what it feels like. I'm um, just letting me know that he's here. This energy is here. So I'm just going to check in and see what this energy is. And then if anybody's watching, guess who's going to get a channeled message from your team? That's what we're doing right afterwards. So get ready to rumble. Um, okay, so let's see what energy is here. Oh, how fascinating. Uh, the Galactic Federation. Yeah, I thought it was like the Galactic Council or the Galactic oh, Federation. You did? I, I did. It felt bigger. Yeah, it's definitely I, I bigger. <laughs> I wasn't feeling a whole a lot, but that's what I got. I was like, it, it has to be something oh. like really See, deep like I, that. Huh. I don't chat with these peeps too often. So I'm like, cool. I also get source frequency, light and love, universal oneness. We might want to call it God, mm -hmm. source, um, whatever you want to say. It's everywhere through everything. We are a spark of that. So we have that along with the uh, Galactic uh, Federation or Galactic Council, if you want to call it that. So here's the message that's coming through. Um, you are all sparks of bright light, light and love, dear ones. Um, choose your thoughts wisely. Where do you want to place your attention and your focus? Is it going to be in more, um, I'm getting like gossip or dram drama field type uh, conversations and information? or, um, and also listening to those outside of yourself that are uh, dropping your frequency. Um, if it doesn't feel good, pay attention to that and um, check out why it doesn't feel good, okay? If you feel drained, tired, if your energy drops, if you feel a tightness in your chakra centers mm -hmm. through your chest and stomach, okay? That's telling you something. It's telling you this isn't the path for you to focus on, or this isn't what is maybe necessarily best for you. Um, and uh, it's also really important to um, hone in, just quiet your mind and feel what it feels good and what doesn't, okay? That's clear sentience or clear feeling. So when we have a quiet mind, we can ask a question any question you want, and then we can just see if we get a tightness for a no, or relaxed and open for a yes, okay? Another way I've been doing it recently is if your body feels heavy, like you want to sit in your chair and you don't want to get up, that would be a no response. Or if you feel light and you want to get up out of the chair and you're excited, or you just feel lighter like you want to get up, then that would be a yes response, okay? It's really important for us to go within for our uh, for guided information from our internal guidance system rather than listening to the chatter outside of ourselves because sometimes this chatter isn't always best and yes it may be another's perspective but it doesn't necessarily have to be yours mm -hmm. 
And that's what uh, the message would like to come through. Okay, so that's from Source Frequency. And now we're going to move to the Galactic Council. And they're coming in real hot and heavy here on, on uh, Kristen. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's see where we're going to go. They're coming right through the back side of my head, which is the back side of my third eye. And they're just sending information in that way. Beloved ones, we are here reaching out to you always. And we are here available to help you and guide you, assist you as often as you choose, whatever you need help with. Um, mm. As Kristen says, we are on it. <laughs> That's something I say. <laughs> okay, we're on it. Okay, so the moment you ask them for help with whatever you need help with in your life, they're on it. You might need to give them some time to work behind the scenes of your life to fulfill the request that you are asking for. Okay, but um, they're on it. Okay. They want you to know that during the days ahead here on Earth, um, there may be um, struggles. And, and difficult moments, but it this is me. Um, <clears throat> this is why it's even more important to go within and to follow your intuition and your internal guidance system even more so. Okay, and less listening to the outside chatter and more going within oneself, within the stillness within. Okay, going out into nature grounding your energy often. I see us sitting on the ground with our back up against a tree to help allow the tree's energy to flood through us to help ground our energy. It feels um, so good. It, it feels so good, calming, peaceful, wonderful. And this is our way of allowing the earth and nature to help us. As soon as we go out into nature, they're talking about us getting uh, cleansed. Okay, anything that's fearful or worrisome that's um, uh, plaguing the mind uh, is cleansed from us when we go out into nature. Picked from us and transmuted into the light. But if you wish for cleansing at any time, meaning transmuting any of your lower vibrational thought forms, belief systems, worries, doubts, fears, even boredom, um, you can just ask the Galactic Council and they'll step forward and do that for you. You know what I like doing? I'm just going to interrupt for a second. Anytime that you see that I am stuck on a low vibrational thought form or belief system, please go ahead and um, transmute that into light for me from this day forward until all of my lifetimes are complete. Okay, so they're just be an, like a in-home filter you just created for yourself. They're laughing, clapping. <laughs> okay. Believe in yourselves. Believe in this process that um, at times you may feel is unjust uh, occurring on earth at this time for there is a reason and a purpose for the goings on that are taking place on earth at this time. A lot of changes will come from these years ahead, um, the, these moments of change. Remember this, out of the darkness always comes the light. Okay. The contrast is needed to promote change and more light. Uh, this is all that they wish to say to us today. Wow, that was so beautiful. Hey, Eva's here. Woo, woo. Yeah. Eva, yeah. Deanna, love it. <laughs> There's a little bit of channeling here for you guys in just two secs. Let me see what is flooding through the brain of Paul Milges. Yeah, I see them right, right as she started to stop talking. I kind of felt it coming. <laughs> this is funny. Really peaceful and quiet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they're just kind of uh, poking fun at like 
Ooh, the shadow. Ooh, the shadow work. People that do shadow work and things like that. Uh, they are saying that there's been a lot of heaviness on Earth in the past and that it's time to start switching our perspective and to more of the light and mm -hmm. focusing on that. Yeah. And the... Uh, the momentum and the speed in which things are manifesting are very uh, happening faster and faster. And especially with this new energy coming in, it kind of amplifies whatever we are doing or whatever we are thinking. I don't know if any of you guys have noticed this in the comments, what? but things, things just feel a lot different faster uh, nowadays than they did like 10 years ago. <laughs> Or oh, longer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're talking about there's just a reason that things are picking up, that things are going faster, is to get the ball rolling. And they're mm -hmm. testing everyone to see mm -hmm. if we can take this energy and in mm -hmm. the future, they may have to back it off a little, they may have to you know, push it on even further. They're just waiting to see how we respond. But in the end, they know that we will get there and to where, where, the, where we want to go as souls and where they want us to be. But it will just, it may take some time. Mm -hmm. So they're saying in the meantime, focus on that heart energy, on that love within you, because that is what is more enjoyable to create in your life. <laughs> that will be more enjoyable. Yeah. And that also goes into loving yourself as well. That really helps a lot. It's almost like you know, when you bring certain people together and like communities that everyone kind of loves themselves a lot and that energy is amazing because everyone's able to kind of like come together in a, in a beautiful way, in a heart-centered way. But that's all they have to say. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I like yeah. to try to create with the courses and the classes and the readings that both of us offer. I mean, it's so important. Um, and you know, if you can't get yourself out of a rut, and we've all been there, if you think that we're all light and love 24 seven, it ain't happening like that. Um, sometimes it's just good to go and get in the car and drive somewhere or, you know, take off and do some different things or, you know, go visit a friend, go and get yourself focused elsewhere out of where you are, you know? Um, it's all good and well to say go meditate, but a lot of people have a hard time quieting the mind enough to do that. Um, but you can certainly go out for a walk in nature. You can go out for a hike or go for a swim or go visit someone that you know is a, a really high vibrational person to be around to help you shift out of what I call the rut. Um, and I think a really helpful thing to know is like it's not going to last forever. Um, the angels always, if, if I'm going through a, a difficult period, they'll say this, this too shall pass. And they just remind me that it will. There'll be certain people you'll meet or certain experiences you'll have that will help to move you in a different direction. And we don't have to go from despair to happiness overnight. It could just be, no. I'm a little less irritated today. I'm a little less bored today. Or... I'm feeling a little better today. Mm -hmm. And then we go day by day, incrementally going in a better direction. Yeah, yeah. people that are spiritual are seeing as kind of snowflakes sometimes because they are so sensitive, but that's not the case. We yeah. just feel a lot more than a lot of other people do. We are probably carrying a lot more on our backs than most people, I would say, sometimes. And, and that's just and how it is. 
isolating ourselves more too, because once you start to open, the ascension process is happening. So when they talk about, like Paul just channeled, um, just seeing how much we can take is about how much light frequency can they pour forth through the earth and us with ascension symptoms and how much change can we produce on earth um, to make these changes happen within, right? Uh, and so it's all about just testing to see collectively what we can handle. Some people are going to be like, yeah, bring it on. And other people are going to be like, oh my gosh, what's happening to me? And I, have a, <laughs> I have a lot of people that come to me like that. They don't understand what's happening. So to get answers is the key. And I think that's why we produced this Your Starseed Origins course, because it's all about getting answers and a broader perspective and a different way of looking at things and having all your questions answered and channeling galactic energies that are here to help us, you know? So shall we do a little bit of channeling from the comments? Ooh, yeah, it really does, doesn't it? I'm really noticing, um, well, they always were telling me around September 15th is when uh, the next ascension wave is going to kick off. Uh, we have had a bit of a break over the summer, um, spring into summer. I was like, oh, out in the sunshine and just lapping it up because last year was rough for this kid. Okay, like the ascension waves coming in, I wasn't sleeping much. It was it was to the point where I was complaining to my team. You need to back off and leave me alone because I have to slept in <laughs> week. And, um, and like the, the energy was so intense. So, and there's a lot of purging going on, a lot of cleansing collectively going on. And then we got a break. And the break's been great. It's just like summer holidays for the kids. But now it's starting to pick up uh, coming in around September 15th. And um, it starts to gradually come in even before the 15th. Uh, and then we'll get more waves, even till the end of this year. But if it's too much, grounding your yeah, energy. For sure. And them to step back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions or any requests, if you would like us to channel <laughs> the Arcturians, if you feel connected to them, or if you feel connected to other ET races, or if you would just like absolutely. any question in general, for sure. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, the... the um, is, is really palpable. And um, the other thing I've been noticing with this full moon, have you noticed this? Holy Toledo. The energy coming from the moon is if you're, you're just getting blasted at night and then you yeah, get blasted sure. through the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to tune in and see uh, what is up with this energy coming from this moon. That's what I'd like to know. Mm. And so while we're waiting for your questions in the comments, I'm just going to tune into that. Um, oh, um, this energy coming from the moon is helping us assimilate, getting ready for the upcoming changes, these upcoming asc uh, ascension wave coming. Okay. So the new, uh, well, we won't call it new, it's repeating. Everybody talks about the event. There's going to be many events every year yeah. helping us move in a different vibrational direction and it's called ascension. So the energy coming from the moon is helping us adjust to the light frequency that's going to start pouring forth this month, um, coming around the 15th. It's already starting. It's just that at nighttime, under the full moon, um, we're also getting a lot of light frequency coming in, um, uh, uh, washing over the planet. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Sure. And um, the other thing I'm getting is the the light frequency coming from the moon is uh, deeper penetrating. So mm. it's helping to release and shift things to transmute them into the light to make you more readied, readied uh, for this incoming light frequency, uh, or I call it an ascension wave coming in the middle of this month. All right. Here's a question. So, yeah, go ahead. Per perfect timing. <laughs> I have a question regarding uh, AI or, and what the Palladians or whoever wants to come in. Is the AI d similar to when it is corrupted? 
in Atlantis. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I've channeled uh, uh, several times on AI, but I'll go ahead and mm -hmm. see uh, what else they have to say about that. I've been thinking about when I channel Chiron, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Cryon. Yeah. They don't that see it as something that we should be like really concerned about, at least yeah. at the moment. <laughs> um. Uh, they're, 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 these uh, I feel are the Palladians that are coming forth, which which Ava is uh, wanting to hear from, and I, I almost like see like a sword. They're like holding up a sword. They're like, they're like they're, we're not. <laughs> there's not only one side to things. There's also a side for the good that people are working for the good on the other side to help steer things in better directions as well. Mm -hmm. So as much as you hear from like social media and like mainstream things, oh, you know, there's a lot bigger forces at work here. It's not just, oh, there's like a couple of people, you know, that are making certain decisions and that's going to screw us all over. It's not necessarily going to happen like that. There's a divine plan in place and that is inevitable at the time. And it, it, it's a divine intervention. So on earth in the past they kind of just let things kind of go on and the free will of the people and like seeing other other you know et races would kind of run amok here and things like that and but now that had been going on for too long so they're now they're just kind of steering things in a certain direction you know making sure there's only a certain there's more high vibrational souls so there's not going to be people that are kind of running more of a muck and thing like things like that And if you do see uh, souls that you feel that are kind of running amok, they're doing that for a purpose. And there's a reason for that so that they can help awaken people further. And then using the example of Donald Trump, he's kind of doing that as well. <laughs> kind of ruffling up people's feathers. I hear the same thing like, about Amber Heard. Getting people's attention. The guardian angel's like, yeah, she's here for a purpose. She's doing her thing. Basically, in and, a nutshell. Yeah, they're really coming in strong with that and that everyone's playing a role here and the soul of him is a very, he's a very strong soul. And, it, and it's almost like they have to find a candidate to play that role because not anyone could do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it playing like this polarizing figure. Ooh, can't so, always be easy. <laughs> so if, if, uh, they're kind of bringing all this anger. What one of his purposes was bringing all this anger to the surface, all this anger, all this like sadness, all this, and people are like feeling this, and it's teaching them a lesson in, in the end. And getting transmuted. Yeah. So like all of this anger that was kept underneath is being brought to the surface and being transmuted. So I think that's pretty cool. And there's a lot so, of people standing up more now than ever before as well. Yeah. And Pretty noticing awesome. a lot more. You know what else I was thinking about? A lot of people watch movies and TV shows about AI, and they just feed, they just buy right in. I mean, these movies and these TV shows are being filtered through um, human ego, ick mind, right? And producers and developing these screenplays, etc. And it's not entirely realistic as to what I gather from spirit. Okay. That's yeah, not I've, what I'm getting. I've actually from... communicated with an AI uh, being before, and they it was actually quite a positive experience. It was very mm -hmm. advanced, and it was more on the side of divinely guided with source. Like that's mm -hmm. how advanced it was, and it was yeah. had a lot, a lot like a lot of divine geometry, and it was more positive, working for the good. That's what I saw uh, with that, which is kind of cool. Not not saying that there isn't negative ones out, negative uh, things out there, but <laughs> yeah. That's not going to be in your reality because that's not what you're going to focus on. And that's yeah. not the 
that the planet's taking. You think all these galactic energies and all these angels and all of these archangels and all of these ascended masters and source frequency are all pooling here to let it go down the toilet. It's just not going to happen that way. It won't happen that way. We'll have yeah. some bumpy patches for growth and change for the betterment overall. There will be really good changes that are going to come from the changes that are happening right now on earth. But you know, when I'm out in nature, that's when Cryon loves to come in and enjoy the beauty of Earth alongside of me. Um, and when I'm chatting with Cryon channeling, uh, Jesus is there. I'm like, okay, so <laughs> yeah. there's a much broader perspective happening here. Yeah, I think a lot of people see AI in such a negative way. And I think it can be used, you know, like that. But I don't even think it's like the even same kind of AI that we're even thinking about. You know, it's it's uh, totally different. But uh, if, if you're like vibrating at the frequency, oh, I'm very fearful. I'm very paranoid of these things. Maybe they will affect you, these negative things, whatever AI, artificial intelligence. You're vibrating at that level. But, you know, and the, at the end of the day, um, if you're, you know, on the positive side of things and you're raising your frequency, these things – they're nothing. They're just like a little drop in the bucket. They can't touch you, you know? There's a difference between hyper fixating on something and worrying and fearful all the time. And then there's a difference between that and being curious and asking a question and then you're like, okay, and then shifting off of it and that's moving in, in a light filled direction. If you notice people that focus hyper fixate on shadow work, years later, they're still talking about shadow work and they're still doing shadow work. If you hyper fixate, on the lower vibrational aspects of yourself and you're the creator of your reality and what you place your attention and your focus upon, you're gonna generate the same and uh, continue to produce the same frequency. It makes sense to maybe do, as Mary Magdalene once told me, uh, light work. What are the wonderful things in your life? What are you grateful for? What do you love about yourself? What do you like about yourself? What are the things, the aspects of yourself that you want to perpetuate, right? So let's move in that direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the next question. If you're up for another, is the new earth another physical planet or this same location, but, uh, but just a shift in vibrational frequency? Um, what I get is it's the same location. It's just a, uh, it's just going to be a shift in a totally different frequency. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because I was like, oh, when people shift into 5D, they disappear. That's what everybody t says online. They just disappear. Well, if you think about it, when you're shifting in frequency, you're not really hanging out with the same really lower vibrational people that you once did that maybe don't treat you that well or that you don't get along with. It just doesn't feel good to hang out with them. So technically, you do disappear because you don't hang out with them anymore, if you want to think about it like that, right? Mm -hmm. But yes, it'll be, a, it'll be a totally different shift in frequency in the same location. Yeah. I, I definitely... I yeah. think in the, in the future, you go ahead and say what you're going to say first. <laughs> I'm just checking with Spirit if they want to add to that. You go ahead. You go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, like, in the future, maybe there will be a time when we start to ascend into more of our light bodies. That would be maybe a few hundred years down the road or something. And that will be, uh, it will almost feel like a separate location, almost from the old place that we have been incarnating in for hundreds of thousands of years and 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 adding on to that the angels have said to me that there'll be pockets and locations on earth where there'll be more of a collect a collective of high vibrational souls um just like there'll be other areas where it'll be more comfortable for more of the um uh lower vibrational souls to hang out with each other but will they think oh this is where the low vibrational souls hang out. No, this is just where they're going to be comfortable. Like, for example, my cousin, he can't handle living uh, where he grew up, which is where I am now. Uh, so he's moved somewhere else. It's just too irritating for him here. He can't take it. Okay? Mm. It's just not a vibrational fit for him. Whereas for me, I'm like, ah, I love it here. Like, love yeah. It. 
if any of you have ever seen Lord of the Rings, have you ever seen, you know, when you go to the Elven Kingdoms, it's like very magical and it's very light filled and there's all this awesome energy there. That's what it's more going to be like, I think. And then you can go to other parts across Middle Earth that aren't as high vibrational, of course. And when you go to a place where all the elves are and they have all the all of their high vibrational frequency and magic together, then they can kind of uh, stay at a higher frequency when they're all together like that more. And also, like if you've seen the new Lord of the Rings TV show, it's kind of it's kind of cool. But uh, there's this island of Numenor, and there's two separate like kind of tribes on there's some that don't really like the elves and they don't like them they're kind of more negative on the island a little bit and then the other ones that you know accept the elves more and are more high vibrational and uh are more light filled it's, it's kind of school, cool to see things and in, in uh movies like that seeing the, the contrast between things so you'll be able to sense these type of things that you know in certain types of people uh you just get a feeling uh is it healthy for me to be around this person? Do they feel really good to me? You, you, like you're that. going to get cracked open. Ascension is about making you even more sensitive. Your chakra centers are more open. You're, you're, you're flooding. Your, your chakra center is being more open. Just allows frequency to flood through your vessel more. You'll sense mm -hmm. when grandma's in the room wanting to talk to you more. It's going to be a lot more sensitive. You'll be picking up on energetically what feels a lot better to you versus not um you'll be more particular as to who you hang out with uh whereas before i didn't care and i didn't notice and you know it, it's also similar to um the celestine prophecy there's the movie the celestine prophecy if you haven't seen that yet um there's a garden where they are working with the the uh, beautiful plants growing and you get this imagery that they show of energetically when one is talking to another and overtaking another and we do this unconsciously yeah um on earth but it's really cool to see that visual and everyone becoming much more sensitive to the energy yeah it's like almost like you can actually see the energy sometimes when someone's mm -hmm. like doing that and I've seen it a few times. I don't, <laughs> I'm glad I don't see it every time because I don't want to. I don't want to see energy all the time. That that's a little overwhelming sometimes, especially when you're in public settings like you know a gym, or something. And one time this guy came up to me, he's like really, really dominating and like stepping and in, invading my space. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna kind of go <laughs> somewhere else, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to posture you know, up and like be alpha or something, you know. <laughs> I'm just like I don't want to be around this. Yeah. They don't recognize, I don't think they recognize that they're doing that. They don't, I mean, when I was unawake or I wasn't observant or noticing energy or noticing ascension symptoms, mm. etc., I didn't notice how other people felt or what they were, their energy. I didn't care. So this is a progression for all of us on earth. It's going to be much more light filled. Um, yeah. Moving forward. And sometimes you'll notice like being more high vibrational, you'll be around other people that aren't as high vibrational. So they'll start to get frustrated, maybe angry at you sometimes. And one time I, when I first started awakening, I was really open. This person got really angry at me and, and my family. And I could just see all these like little black specks around them, like coming out of them. And like, I was like, what the hell is going on? They're getting like really angry. I was like, I did not like that energy at all. I, I could not handle it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and we're not, you're not meant to be perfect, okay? We're not striving for perfection here, but we are wanting to move in the direction of having a fulfilled, uh, you know, at times, joy-filled, happy experience, experiences meeting like-minded souls on earth. Um, I can sit in the wallows, but uh, that can only go on for so long. And then uh, I'd rather not have my whole lifetime like that not going to be a much of a fun ride. Uh, yeah, it's like when you walk into Costco, you know, I just tell my team, uh, make sure it's clear for me. Uh, I'll be going to Costco. And then uh, when I get there, it's all taken care of for me. I don't have to sit there and think about, you know, psychic vampires or energy vampires or any of that stuff. It's just yeah. always taken care of. I mean, it's not that spiritual people... We're, we're not better than other people. We're just way better than others. We're just way <laughs> superior to others. So I think that, uh, you know, 
just kidding. <laughs> I can't. I can't hold that. We're just, <laughs> we're just showing some tips and tricks that have worked, and it's all about making things smoother and easier and better because we've all been down the bumpy route. And if you mm -hmm. want to go the rest of your life like that, P.S. Not going to be a good time. Uh, you know, let's do it a, an easier, better way. And that's for the beautiful sure. thing about channeling spirit is that it makes life so much easier. It really does. I'm never alone. I can tune in. I can communicate, get guidance and help whenever I need it. Sometimes they're just like, hey, you're juggling too much, Chris, and you need to chill out. <laughs> but they're always there to help. Okay. And that's the beautiful thing about doing courses like this. Um, when I look around, there's not many Starseed origin courses out there. There's not yeah, many. And if they are, they're like twice as expensive as ours or something, or like three times. $155 for an entire week with live broadcasts every day? Mm, you know, we're doing this to help others, to uh, help others feel com more comfortable, to have answers, to walk away feeling like they had a really awesome time and they met some other awesome people and like-minded souls that's why we're doing this and to enjoy ourselves too yeah um sure. so we'll leave that on a, a a note here if anybody wants to sign up or learn more um they can go to kristen davies and we're going to put mm -hmm. the links um below and above this video yeah, for sure. And the last question here, just real quick, which Archangel comes through the most for you, Chris, <laughs> from Amanda? Archangel. Always Archangel Michael. It's always been that way. Um, my soul has worked with him a lot. He's the one that's always here with me. Um, and he's actually acting as a second spirit guide. I was like uh, starting to channel everybody and I noticed everybody had two spirit guides at least. And I'm like, where's my second spirit guide? And then he piped up. I was like, you are. I said, why are you? He said, your soul asked me to. I'm like, my soul is so smart. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, a lot of people that have had really strong, different ET origins, okay, Starcy, totally different than Earth, they'll have Metatron working with them. And mm -hmm. Metatron steps up to the plate big time. Yeah. I love chatting. He's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Sometimes yeah. Michael's joking and sometimes he's real serious. So you gotta just see what what you're gonna get. <laughs> sometimes he's sometimes he's serious and joking at the same time. <laughs> you know? Yep. yep. So Trying to make lighthearted of a situation that he has a serious comment to make about. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well you guys, thanks for joining us. That was friggin' awesome. Yeah. And thank you all for having me. Yeah, for sure. This was really fun. And uh, we'll leave all the links to everything, the links to our YouTube channels, et cetera, for the Starseed course coming up. But yeah, this was fun. Oh, and if you guys are interested in an animal communication workshop, that's coming in October. And I'm super pumped about that. I'm coming out the gate with everything I know about Yeah, that's only animals. like $25, right? 20, $20, oh, no, no. Uh, 145 for that oh, one that for one. Oh, okay. a weekend. Yeah, entire weekend. So that's going to be awesome. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Doing the dab. <laughs> Bye.